All right, our last one in what's seemed like a never-ending unit of physical behavior of matter, 5.10 colligative properties. So before we really get into colligative properties, we have to define a term, electrolyte. And an electrolyte is a substance that produces ions when dissolved in a solution. It dissociates. Okay, so when we take salt, it into water okay the sodium breaks apart into Na pluses the chloride breaks apart into Cl minuses that breaking apart of the ionic bond is called dissociation so anything that dissociates produces these ions in water is said to be an electrolyte now because these ions are free to move around the solution will conduct electricity. So we put salts into water, water goes from a non-conductor to a conductor of electricity because particles can move around. Mobile, just like the you know sea of mobile electrons in a metallic bonded substance, these mobile ions conduct electricity. Now, exception, okay, Acids and bases are also electrolytes. Okay? And we're going to say that's an exception because acids and bases are covalently bonded, not ionically bonded, but they produce electrolytes. All right, so electrolytes include acids, bases, and salts are going to be our electrolytes. All right, so now we can better understand what colligative properties are. All right, so here's what it's all about. When a solute is dissolved in a solvent, the solvent molecules surround the particles of the solute. This causes the boiling point and freezing point of the solution to change in a very specific and predictable way. All right, and here's the way they change. All right, so let's think about it here for a moment. So if we take water, once again, and we put in salt, Okay, what's going to happen? Well, one, the vapor pressure of the water will get lower. So by simply adding salt, right, the vapor pressure at any given temperature would actually get lower. The boiling point is elevated. So the boiling point goes up. The freezing point is depressed. Not boohoo, it feels sad, it's going to you know, be emo and cut itself. No, no. The freezing point depressed just means that the freezing point is going to decrease. And the amount that each of these is affected is related to the number of dissolved particles. Okay. So what's actually happening here is, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in class, with some uh, better pictures too. But what, what happens here is as we put the salt in the water, okay, since it breaks up into its ions, okay, these are going to stick to the water molecules. And it's going to kind of hold them together. It's going to make the liquid stay a liquid. It's going to make the liquid stay a liquid. Okay, it's going to be harder to boil it. It's also going to be harder to freeze it. And this is something that you've actually kind of experienced. If you go outside when there's ice on the ground and you put salt on it. Why? Well, it turns that ice from a solid back to a liquid. The salt actually causes the ice to melt. Also, making spaghetti. Add some salt to the water. Yes, it helps with the flavor but it's also going to make the water boil at a slightly higher temperature. Okay, number of dissolved particles. When I add an NaCl molecule to water, it's going to dissociate into Na plus and Cl minus. That has two particles. 
If I dissolve, let's see, calcium chloride, CaCl2, that's going to dissolve into, right, one calcium, a Ca2+, plus, a Cl-, minus, and another Cl-, minus. one, two, three particles. Sugar is covalently bonded, C6H12O6. If I put that into water, it's going to dissolve into C6H12O6 aqueous one particle. So the more particles, the more the colligative properties affect the boiling point, freezing point, vapor pressure lowering of the liquid. So of these three, CaCl2 will have the greatest effect, sugar will have the lowest effect, and the salt will be somewhere in the middle. Question time. Which will lower the freezing point of water more, sugar or salt? Come on, if you can't get this, tsk, tsk, tsk. Which will lower the freezing point of water more, KCl or CaCl2? That should be just as easy. All right, that brings us to the end of 5.10 and to the last video of our PBOM, Physical Behavior of Matter Unit. I will see you guys in school.